Hi there guys, it's Mike here from MCQ Bushcraft and in this video I wanted to show you the Maxpedition Xantha. This is a fairly new pack for me that I've owned for about two months now and I wanted to share with you some of the experiences I've had with it in the two months that I've owned it whilst practicing bushcraft, hiking and doing various other things and really just review the pack, have a look at its pros and cons, some of its key features by the end of the video you should have a pretty good idea of who this pack's for and whether it's right for you. So if we just have a look at the pack at face value you can tell straight away that it's made by Maxpedition. It looks very much like one of their packs as it is and it has their branding you know pretty much all over it and uh, it's of a very good build quality. I was very impressed when I opened it and I had a look at the build quality of this pack. They do use a lighter weight webbing than they do on their other packs. You'll notice that on the Condor 2, which was the old pack I used, the webbing was very starchy. This material here was a lot firmer and more robust And on this pack. It seems to be of a slightly looser weave and it's much more flexible and much floppier. And that was something I didn't really like off the cuff because I like Maxpedition's products because they're very rugged. And one thing I do like is, is sort of a tight weave on webbing. Um, you know, and things to just be really robust so they can take a lot of dirt and also shed dirt well. If we just have a look at the pack here and I spin it round, you can see this is the front of the pack. You have a little bit of a Velcro there, some mole on the front, just here as well. And uh, if I spin this round, you can see that we have a sort of, you know, water bottle or Nalgene bottle holder just there with a drawstring that basically allows you to kind of tighten up on the top of the bottle to stop it dropping out. We have a compression strap just there as well, so you can obviously put other things in or compress that water bottle holder completely. And if we spin that round again, you can see we've got this sort of egg cup padding on the back there, which is really nice and comfortable. This is an internal frame backpack. It's a kind of Maxpedition's entry into internal frame backpacks and it has a, a large kind of plastic shapeable plate with a metal bar down it and uh, it is very comfortable on the back I must give it credit for that it is very comfortable although I hear it's not particularly comfortable if you're the larger gent or lady um, because apparently this padding here doesn't go all the way around in the right place but for somebody like me who's got a fairly slim build it is very comfortable and it goes around my waist quite comfortably but overall the back of the pack you can see there quite comfy I'm just really looking at it at face value. We will talk about the key features specifically. But just so you get an idea of the pack, you can see you've got another water bottle holder just over this side here, and I have my cooking kit in there. Again, with a drawstring, with a compression strap, and you do have two compression straps around the top of the pack. You can see them here and here. Um, I use compression straps very rarely. Um, when things are pretty empty and they're flopping around everywhere, they are useful you know, to, to kind of cut down on all of that, but um, generally I don't really use them too often. Uh, we do have a grab handle at the top there, nice firm grab handle, and uh, there isn't too much webbing anywhere around here in terms of mole. There's just no mole around here. This pack is really like a kind of backpacking sort of backpack. It's not like a tactical pack like their other packs. It does possess a few qualities of a tactical pack, but it's more of like a standard backpacking backpack um, but just made with Maxpedition products that's just generally the feel that I've got from it and from using it and uh, it's of a fairly good weight as well materials are very solid you know you've got a little bit of padding here quite comfortable these could be a bit thicker really in terms of width personally um, you've got a bit of mole down the straps here so you can hook things on and you do you do have a sternum strap there that uh, you know helps keep it taut in, or you know, a lot of people don't really use these too often anyway. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty good pack in terms of first impressions. You know, build quality is very good, and you know, it does live up to Maxpedition's kind of hard use product at a glance. You do also have some straps at the bottom, and again, I, I never find these big enough on a lot of their backpacks. The Condor 2, I had to extend it myself but this is pretty good for like a foam roll mat, a tarpaulin, a wool blanket, something along those lines but in the winter if you have a really big sleeping bag you will have to extend these if you hope to get it on the base of the pack. So when I first bought this pack I went out for a bit of a hike around about three miles and it was fairly fully loaded 
because I wanted to see what it could do and I fancied getting out because it was a really nice day. And the first thing I noticed was uh, the current setup with this kind of uh, waistband here would loosen as I walked. And I'd be walking along and then I'd start to feel a lot of weight on my shoulders and it got very uncomfortable. I couldn't really work out what was going on. And then it twigged, you know, these are loosening up basically. And the way they worked before is you basically pull them like this outward. Some pigeons getting a bit comfortable there. That's what happens when you sit still. Everything starts to uh, fly around you and you blend in. But yeah, you start to pull these straps and everything tightens up and uh, it would just gradually loosen. So what I did is I took the old webbing off of the Condor 2, or borrowed, borrowed it, and uh, just put it on and developed a slightly different system where you just pull normally onto the buckle. So instead of it looping through the buckle and coming back onto this adjustment strap and tightening there, I just have it normal, normally like it is on a buckle, just like this. You know, so you're just pulling it like that and tightening it. And it hasn't come loose since then, but I was pretty disappointed that I had to do that on a pack that I'd just bought. And um, yeah, it's not really something you want, especially with the cost of the pack, because it's not cheap. You can see on this uh, waist strap here, you've got two little pockets. I keep a ferrocerium rod in one, just so I've got it at hand and I can use it with my neck knife to strike an ember if I really want to, or produce some fire if I'm on the go, or don't want to take my pack off. So, you know, you can put little things in those pockets, but you can't put a huge amount in, in them really. Um, they're not very big and you would have to make them bigger if you really, really wanted to put significant things in there. Personally, I think they should have just left this as mole, so you could have put what you want on there and, you know, tailored it to your, to your requirements really. But that's really the waistband and, um, you know, it's, uh, it's okay. You know, it's, it's not too bad and fairly useful. A little bit of extra storage. If we look at the side of the pack here, you'll see, obviously I've got the water bottle holder here, which I've had to modify myself again. Um, but if we unzip this down here, you've got like a secret pocket there. And in here, I usually keep my knife or my backhoe Laplander when it's not in use on my belt or in my pocket. Um, but again, you know, you've got quite a lot of space in these pockets here. You know, they're not too bad. But the problem with them is, is if you have anything, you know, of a significant bulk in the core of the pack, they become unusable. Um, I had that experience the other day when I did some wild camping, packed a lot of cold gear for, you know, the winter, you know, warm sleeping bag, wool blanket, all this sort of stuff, extra clothes, um, you know, a hat, all this kind of, you know, bulk basically, and even took my waterproofs and, you know, these pockets become unusable. And also that bulk starts to eat in to the water bottle holder. So if you have the original water bottle holder that comes stock with the pack, um, you know, when you pack it out in the inside, the pockets just become very, very tight and you almost have to pack those first before you pack the core of the pack because if you pack the, you know, the, the core pocket with all your bulky gear, you won't be able to get much in there. So you have to do this first, then that. And it kind of makes putting them back in a bit tricky if you haven't taken that bulk out. So again, that's a, a little bit of an issue there. You can see I've extended mine. I've extended mine by stitching a triangular piece of Cordura fabric in off an old dump pouch that I had, an old Maxpedition dump pouch uh, that was kind of coming to the end of its life. It was sort of four or five years old and it's been used pretty heavily, but that's just made them usable when the core of the pack is now full. Um, so I can have a big sleeping bag in there and all that sort of stuff. And these pockets are still fairly large to take the bulk of whatever I want to put in them. So that's just a small change that I had to make. Again, they could have just made these pockets a bit bigger. Um, it wouldn't have cost them much else and it would just been an extra two inches of material. And they could have saved uh, you know, quite a lot of complaints really on that one. You have a hidden pocket the other side too. So you can see it's pretty much mirrored in terms of its design. You know, everything I show you, they'll be on one side, it'll be on the other side. So it is, is a mirrored pack. Um, again, really mole could have been added to this side and you could have put your own canteen holder on the side there. Um, or maybe just mole on one side and, and the canteen holder on the other. And that probably would have been a, a slightly more accommodating design for those of us who like to tailor things to our needs. But let's have a look at the front. 
So the front of the pack you have some Molle. Maybe you want to put a med kit on there. It's usually what I would put on there. I do have a med kit at home, uh, but it's not on here at the moment. It's actually just in the side of the pack um, because I've got a pretty empty pack today. Um, but yeah, you can put a med kit on there and you know you could access that pretty much straight away if need be. And it's a clever item really to have um, on the outer of a pack to be accessible in uh, situations where you suddenly need them because they're always fairly unexpected when they crop up. But we have a front pocket here and that opens up. It has a number of different compartments in there. I mean at the moment I've just got a maintenance kit in there because I wouldn't really need anything else today. We have a webbed pocket here and you can see that it used to be stitched so it was in two halves so it ran like this and there were two little pockets but I usually like to put other things in there like that like my fishing and sort of hunting kit like a slingshot maybe even some ammunition or something like that or sandwiches or whatever you want to put in there I just found the two little pockets too small for anything I own so I unthreaded that stitch there and uh, you know made it a little bit bigger but the pockets are fairly big and you do have this pouch here too which can zip up and it has like a key ring holder on I've never really used those but in here I put my field journal when I write about mushrooms wild edibles you know medicinals things that I'm learning out in the field and notes and experiences that I have that I don't really want to forget you know because you may do when you get home field journal goes in there and it can be accessed fairly quickly but this is a fairly large pocket and you could put all your tools in here I mean I've got my axe on my belt as I do my knife and maybe you want to put your axe in there this is a Granfus Brooks uh, wildlife hatchet again this pouch becomes pretty unusable if you bulk out the core of the pack so when I put a huge sleeping bag you know in the core of the pack there's no way that this will fit in there if you look at the width of that you know it's fairly uncompressible because there's lots of stuff in there you know that wouldn't be able to go in there so I'd have to move that up just there because that bottom part would get bulked out with the sleeping bag so again I, I wasn't too happy about that and uh, um, yeah it's a bit of a shame really but again if we unclip these compression straps and we have a look at the top of the pack let's say you can see if we unzip that just there I've got a hygiene and med kit in there this is actually a glasses pouch um, you know it kind of intrudes on the, the inside of the pack but you know that that's not a bad thing that's just its design you can see it there um, you know it flaps around inside but it doesn't take up a huge amount of room and you can always kind of thread it over the top of stuff um, but yeah you could put whatever you like in there something you want to access quickly I've just got a little bit of a medical kit in there at the moment things I need to grab quite quickly and you, you can see the orange tag there I should mention the zipper pulls too they're not original zipper pulls that come with the pack this is a snake knot and I generally use this on zipper pulls on my kit just because I find it easy to grab you know and it doesn't uh, kind of slip out your hands but let's have a look in the main compartment at the top of the pack here I should mention you have like a security popper that goes through your zipper pulls and just stops things being torn open real fast although you know out in the woods you probably really don't need to use that kind of thing but in an urban environment maybe you're sitting on the tube or something yeah, maybe it'll come in handy so if we have a look inside the pack here this is the main compartment and we've got a large zipper pocket mesh pocket just here you can see that just there you can put any manner of things in there and I suppose for those of you watching and you own your own kits or are looking for a pack you can pretty much visualize what you would do with this if you bought it um, just by having a look at it we have a large Cordura pouch just here you can see you can get pretty much your whole arm in well up to the elbow obviously um, so it extends the whole length of the pack and uh, it's a fairly large inner compartment it's about 30 liters this pack in terms of capacity and that's quite an important thing to mention and it's obviously made of Maxpedition's you know ballistic nylon features all the same things as their other pack in terms of build quality although it does feature that looser webbing which I mentioned which um, you know is really just nitpicking it could be just as good it might just be a slightly different design but it was nice that the older product that I used the Condor 2 was so robust you know and using it well over three years you know in many different contexts it was a it was a solid pack and a bit small though for me nowadays I like to carry other things other than just the bare minimum when I go out but yeah I can get my snug pack softy 4 sleeping bag in here as long as I compress it small enough but it does intrude a little bit on these outer pouches which is why I've stitched that extra material in there 
to make them usable. But the secret pockets, unfortunately, they become completely unusable unless you're putting documents in there. Maybe you want to put, you know, like a hunting permit in there inside a plastic waterproof slip. I usually do. Put my shotgun certificate in there, my license and stuff when I go out, go, you know, do a bit of shooting. I've got, you know, my documents in there because they're just flat. So, you know, there are things you can put in there, but it becomes very limited and it's uh, it's a bit unfortunate really. But there we go, that's a brief look at the Maxpedition Exantha. There is a Zafar, which is I believe a 27 or 28 litre pack and it's just slightly um, shorter than this. And this is the Exantha, the 30 or 32 litre version of that pack. So you've had a good look at the pack and its key features and uh, I've shown you some of the modifications I've had to make um, really to make it suitable for me and, and really a more usable pack by its design. I think um, you know the, the sort of waist strap issue has been sorted now. I think they also did a recall as well so if you contacted them and said you were one of the people you had a problem with the waist strap they would sort it for you free of charge and obviously pay your shipping and things like that. Um, and also, you know, the water bottle holder, I mean, I, I don't think they've obviously addressed that. That's just part of the design. And unfortunately, if you overload the pack on the inside and, you know, because it is just fabric after all, it's going to flex. It's not like a, a box that things are confined to a, a certain space. You know, they do intrude on each other, as do all backpacks, really, in some form or another. I just think, really, that should be taken into consideration and extra material added. Um, you know, to, to make it a more usable pocket really on the outer. But I've done quite a lot with this pack. I've, I've used it for two months, so you know, this isn't certainly like a, a review where I, I've just been given it and I'm just telling you about it. I've used this pack for two months and I really did try and make it work for me. Um, you know, did a lot of hiking, as I say. I've done quite a few miles in it, fully loaded, I've been out on numerous campouts, use it for work, doing campouts and courses and such and uh, you know really been at home as well sort of trying to get it to, to kind of configure it in a certain way that, that works for me but it just hasn't quite stuck this time and uh, you know it did cost me quite a bit of money as well to actually get this pack over from the States. I, you know, I paid full whack for it as I do with pretty much all my kit and uh, yeah a bit of a shame <laughs> but that's just the way it goes isn't it. You know, it's just uh, I wish yeah, I don't really have the money to uh, to just go out and buy lots of stuff and and know what it's going to be like um, until I've used it. So in this case, you know, I, I really love the Condor too. Was pretty much using it for, for three years solid, but um, wanted something a bit bigger and more comfortable on the back, just to accommodate you know more equipment really that I enjoy taking out with me these days. Um, and uh, yeah, this this really I thought this was going to be the one. Um, but it's not. I will give it credit where it's due. It's it's really well made. Fantastic pack if you are considering it. Um, you know, do look into it a bit. There are other reviews out there and some people might be getting on really well with it. It's, it's made to a very high standard. The stitching is excellent. It repels water very well. It's incredibly comfortable to wear. And perhaps if you've got something like a cond or two, and uh, you know you're just looking for something a little bit bigger a little bit more comfortable there's no reason why this wouldn't be a good companion for you it's just I was after something a little bit different for me anyway and uh, this this hasn't really fitted the bill but that's just my opinion it's just my opinion really um, there are a few things that I haven't mentioned about the pack really um, and that's that the zips have like a flap that goes over the top of them so when you are in rain it does repel rain quite well and uh, I did forget to mention that. And, it, and you can fit a water bladder in there as well. You can put a water bladder in there and it's got little pockets just here where the pipe can come out either left or right hand side of the shoulder strap so you can put a hydration kit in there and you can unzip the pack as well and actually take out the, um, the back plate. So there's like an inner pocket, I don't know whether you can see that there you unzip that and this whole sort of spine type system just can come out so I mean perhaps you don't want to put that in the washing machine because I do wash my Maxpedition packs I usually just chuck them in the washing machine um, and they get really dirty mainly after you know a good year of use really you don't wash them all the time but 
so they don't really hold dirt too easily. Um, they generally look new for a long time. So you know you can chuck it in the washing machine, take all the bits out that you don't want to wash, and uh, you know it probably hold up to that very very well as their other packs do because it is a, a good material. But I think uh, there was a pack I was I was really interested in buying, and I almost bought it before this. I actually had it in my hands and I was I was offered it at a pretty good price, and that was uh, the Carrymore um, Special Forces Predator Patrol Pack in 45 litre, the square one with a lot of mole around it. And I've really been eyeing it up. I know quite a lot of uh, people out in the field who are real experts who use that pack and really rate it highly. Well, I will give it credit. It's incredibly comfortable on the back and I'll show you it. I'll put it on now and you can see how it conforms to me. So I'll just pop this on. You can see how it sort of fits on you. I'm about 5'10 and uh, I have a fairly slim waist. <laughs> so you know, it fits pretty snug for me and I've done these up fairly tight. You can see the padding on somebody like me really comes round the hips and I think some of the larger chaps were complaining that, um, or bigger lads were saying that it's not comfortable, you know, if you're, you know, you're sort of quite round there. Because um, these pad this padding just doesn't really, doesn't really work. So that is something to bear in mind. But you can see the um, sternum strap isn't really necessary if you have the waistband done up nicely and really depends on the weight obviously it's super light at the moment I've got very little in there you can see it fits quite high very very comfortable allows me good access of stuff around the back there like my axe slingshot my knife and uh, you know it's, it's a very comfortable pack and I've done a lot of hikes in it and I will give it credit for that I've not had any problems with comfort and um, you can see there it's it's nice fits really well you know you've got the um, rain cover just there out the way as well it doesn't interfere with the back of my head provided you fit it you know in the right way you can just see it's a, it's a decent comfortable pack you know it conforms to the body very well so the internal frame aspect of it is excellent and I think you know if you're sort of using some of their other packs and you like their packs and you're happy with the size of that pack because they do make fairly small packs um, you know, you just want something a little bit more comfortable, it's a great option for you. But if you're looking for something fairly big to do one job does all, you know, so you want to pack for all year round and maybe you want to go out in very cold conditions and you need to carry all that extra gear with you, it's probably not the, the right pack for you to be fair. Guys, I hope that helps, you know, in terms of like a review and an overview of this pack. It's just my opinion, you know, there might be a lot of guys out there who absolutely love it and having a really good experience with it, so it's worth going and checking out other reviews and not just listening to me because um, this is just my experience with it um, but yeah I hope that's helped and I do thank you for watching and um, hopefully I shall see you in another video very very soon so thank you again guys and take care